Beth. Hi, Tanisha. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing pretty well. Great. So uh, what are we talking about today? Today we're going to talk about the 21st century teacher. Ooh. And what that means. Yes. What that means for all of us. Yes. Let's talk about that. Okay. And, and what's our rationale for talking about this? Our rationale for talking about this, I think it's important because there has been a lot of discussion about teachers. It's been an ongoing discussion for years. It's not something we're new to. Uh, we've been discussing things like their roles in the classroom, their value in the classroom, and the skills they have to have to be an effective instructor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the term has been floating around for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. So the, the new century had already begun and about 10 years later, they started talking about the 21st century teacher. Yes. Which I think is interesting too. Yeah. <laughs> really maybe, interesting. Maybe we were still afraid Y2K was going to happen. I think so. I think some <laughs> people are still worried it's going to happen actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so that's kind of why we're talking about it. So of course we are nerds. Uh, we did a little bit of research. So you know me, uh, I went to Google. Uh, and actually, I came across this article on Edutopia, and the title of this article is actually called 15 Characteristics of a 21st Century Teacher. And it was a really interesting article that was actually written by, uh, looks like a woman by the name of Sisana Palmer. Mm -hmm. And she lays out some of these characteristics that I kind of found to be interesting. Some of, some of them we already know, but mm -hmm. I think some of them are definitely things we need to consider. Uh, the first one that was listed, learner-centered classroom and personalized instruction, which mm -hmm. means kind of really expanding how we think about instruction being like a one-size-fits-all type of content, uh, and really just taking into consideration students' personalities, goals, and mm -hmm. needs. Uh, another interesting thing that I thought was pretty new to me was number two, which is students as producers, mm -hmm. uh, as far as students producing their own content. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that that was a 21st century thing. So I, I, that was kind of something that I didn't expect on the list, mm -hmm. students as producers. And it was something that I know me and some of my colleagues are already doing. And that means just having students have ownership for what they create in class. So things like blogs, books, how-to videos, uh, things like that. I know, mm -hmm. for example, there was a semester where I had students produce blogs, and that was a lot of fun. Another one was also learn new technologies, what I think we already know, right? right? Also go global, which I thought is an interesting perspective because because of things like technology and the internet, we are no longer just by ourselves right. on campuses. We have to think about global focuses. Another one I found to be interesting is actually the use of smartphones in the classroom. Mm -hmm. I know many instructors are like, no phones. Mm -hmm. I don't want mobile phones, put them away, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but there's actually, you know, focusing on encouraging the use of smartphones in the classroom. Like there have been moments in the classroom where I've actually said, hey, get out your phones and let's look up this situation that's going on right now. Or, hey, get out your phones and let's look up this word. And just really incorporating their phones right. into, into the lesson itself instead of it being a distraction. Another one is actually, uh, that, that was on the list. Collaborating was another one. Use Twitter chat was also on the list, which I thought is really interesting for all of the Twitter users out there. If you're interested in using Twitter, that might be something that you're interested in using. Uh, another focus was, which I found interesting, was coding. Oh, wow. So, which is interesting because we had, I believe, the Educational Technology Conference. It was a district-wide conference for our community colleges. And the representative from Apple, I don't remember his name, he talked about coding and how coding is something that should be a focus. Mm -hmm. It's something that is actually pretty important, especially for the teacher of today. So coding, it's really interesting. It's being considered uh, a key component of the teacher today. The ability to be literate in coding, and I know that makes a lot of people feel uncomfortable when you talk about coding. Tanisha, or I don't no? even really know what that means. Okay, that that's, yeah, a, a lot of people don't. It And I'm still kind of trying to figure it out mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand of coding, is that 
it's like a it's like a language. Okay. It's a digital, I believe, HTML language. Okay. And once you learn this language, you can transfer that language into the internet, and then this internet or the system will read that language, and then whatever you want it to do, it'll pop up. Okay. So say that you're designing sense. a web page, yeah. right, or your blog, right, and maybe you don't like the features or the functions that are freely available to you in your blog, and you're like, I don't like this. I'm going to write a code to make it look the way I want it to. Do, okay. do, 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 do. Boom, I got a okay. new page. That's how I understand coding. I could be wrong because my knowledge is very, very basic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But from what I understand of it, this is a big deal. I have even heard stories and reports about how there is this move and trend to teach, I believe, coal miners to code as a new way of uh, a, a new focus in their profession and, yeah. and adding to their profession. Mm -hmm. So coding has been a topic that I guess is going to start gaining some traction okay. over the years. Yeah, that makes sense. And we have the Coding Academy here in Phoenix on Central. Oh, I right. didn't know that. That's a high school, okay. specialized high school called the Coding Academy. Yeah, so it's looking like that might be something that we need to learn. So, so yeah, so that's only some of the characteristics. They were the character characteristics that really stuck out to me. And and I, the articles that I read on this topic all said the exact same thing as, as what you just said. And, and all of them addressed technology. One article I read said teachers had to be, quote, masters of technology, end quote. Mm. Masters of technology. Yes. Which I thought was interesting. But another article I read did kind of caution that too, right? Because mm. We, we, we can't just go into classrooms and and throw technology at our students. Yes. We, we still have to make decisions about, you know, I, I like to say, am I getting the biggest bang for my buck? How much time am I putting into the lesson if I'm incorporating technology? What are my students getting out of it if they spend 10 minutes using some technology or some tool? Is, is the end result worth all of that? Right? Is the tool right. worth it? So we still have to make those decisions, and if it's not, if the tool is not worth it, then we have to decide not to use it. Right. right. In other words, it's not just using technology for the sake of technology. Right. Um, the other points that I noticed that I thought were important and pretty uh, recurring throughout all of the articles were the ability to adapt, change, and grow, and the desire to collaborate. So what do we say about all that? I kind of already threw some opinion in there, but what do you think? Well, I definitely agree with what you said about when it comes to technology, you don't want to just use technology for the sake of technology. I think mm -hmm. we live in a technology age, and I think some people feel the pressure of just using technology all the time. And technology is great, but sometimes you can still get the job done with just a whiteboard and a marker or a pen and paper, and it can still be just as effective. So I think mm -hmm. you have, as an instructor, you have to decide what will work best yeah. for your class, but be, be open to right. po possibilities or other forms of technology that could actually help to enhance the learning experience of the student. Right. So I definitely agree with that. Now me personally, uh, what do I have to say? Uh, I do agree with the 15 characteristics on a professional level. But one question that popped into my head is, uh, what about the personal level? That was the question I had. What about the professional aspects, the personal characteristics of a 21st century teacher? This level is really just as important for longevity in the profession. I believe that the 21st century teacher meets the professional characteristics outlined in the article. I truly believe that. Uh, pretty much everyone that they listed, I was like, yes, 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 yes. However, the personal also needs to be included. It cannot be excluded. It needs to be included as well. Mm -hmm. And I thought the same things. When I was reading the articles, that's one thing that I was struck with. What's being left out, right? So here, here are all these experts and professionals telling us what the 21st century teacher is, but there are things going on right now in the 21st century teacher, or in the 21st century, right. that are not being accounted for in these lists. Right. Right. Um, now, I did see advocacy in one list that the 21st century teacher needs to be an advocate of their profession. And I think that has been the case for a while. Right. And we, you and I were just talking about 
how challenging it can be to be a teacher. And I remember at some point in my career, maybe it was about 10 years in, I started realizing that if, if I wanted people to have a really good idea of what I was doing in the classroom, then I needed to tell people what I was doing and I needed to be an advocate for my profession. If I did not speak up, there wasn't really anybody else who was going to say anything right. uh, you know, on my behalf. Um, and, and people who were saying things might be saying things that are not correct. Right. right. So I, I wanted my voice to be a little bit louder so that people could actually hear it. And I feel like the same thing's going on right now, where if, if we want certain people to know what we're doing as educators, then we need to somehow get the word out. So we need to use Twitter. We need to be blogging. We need to be a little bit louder than some of the voices around us who maybe don't understand what we're doing or don't appreciate what we're doing. Um, so I think the advocacy piece is, is really, really big. And that's, that's, that, to me, that's both personal and professional. Right, because right. We, we need to, I think, advocate to actually feel better about ourselves too, right? right. To, to drown out the voices that might drag us down a little bit. Let's just, we won't say what they are, but we will say they exist. Right. Right. Um, and I think also interpersonal skills, what you were talking about, were, were left out of the list. You know, we, we, so we just had another school shooting recently, and I think that you know, teachers are called upon to, you know, be some sort of wise beacon to their students when right. some sort of tragedy occurs that's just unspeakable. You know, how do we talk about it? But like, these are things we can't really prepare for. You know, right. we come in ready to teach our class. Right. But stuff's happening in the 21st century. What if this is our new world? Very true. Right? Like, we're, we're, we're creating our world every single day. Right. And that's kind of the world that's been created for a right. while, right? Right. That's the pattern that's been set up, that these things happen. Right, and it's interesting so, that you say that because I went to a session at South Mountain Community College. They were having a dialogue day and they had different uh, discussions about difficult conversations and one of the rooms that you could go to was mass shootings. Wow. And uh, as far as, you know, how can we facilitate these conversations with our students? Mm -hmm. And I went to that session and there were only three other people in that session and wow. the facilitator. And I was like, wow, like, I thought there would maybe be more people yes. here. And, and self-disclosure for myself, I only I ended up in that room by accident, actually. <laughs> I was looking for a different room. So I, did, I was not actually seeking the mass shooting room, but I just made the decision to just, I'm just gonna go to this room. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting because everything you talked about, that's what she talked about. Mm -hmm. As far as mm -hmm. these things happening in our classroom, do you just pass by it? How do you have these conversations? And her focus was, have the conversation, mm -hmm. have the conversation. Your students want you to talk about that. Mm -hmm. We can't mm -hmm. ignore what's going on outside of the classroom. So maybe you can take 10 minutes mm -hmm. to say, how is everyone doing? How is everyone feeling? Does anyone have a personal connection to the situation? Mm -hmm. And we need to have a discussion about it. Mm -hmm. Are you feeling some type of way? Because what if there's a student in our classroom, there is a shooting that happens and they get a text in the middle of your class mm -hmm. that someone that they know was involved or they got or they lost their life. Mm -hmm. Are we just gonna be like, oh, okay, okay class, today we're gonna talk about dialectical tensions and we're gonna talk about the communication model. I mean, right. you know, so I, I think that that's, that's a very important point. What, what's kind of interesting to me too is that so much about the 20th, 21st century teacher is technology, which yes. is so, which seems so, and I, and I didn't say this at the beginning of the podcast, but the term just seems very science fiction to me. Mm. 21st century teacher. I feel like I'm about ready to enter into a Twilight Zone episode right. or some kind of science fiction <laughs> film. But, yeah. you know, technology is so, is so non-human seeming, right? Cold mm. and non-feeling. Mm. At least that's, that's kind of its connotations. Mm -hmm. And yet... We, we're existing in a world where we have so many serious issues happening. Right. And, and not just violence, but even just daily racisms or, right. or anything else, right, that right. are so human. 
Right. And how, and, and now I, you know, maybe we're swinging back. Maybe we're already getting away from some of the technologies. I don't know. Or maybe needing to get away from them more. Mm-hmm. To maybe reconnect with people. Maybe. That's an interesting point. And where do we do that? Where do we connect with people? Right? Classroom. That's one space. Church. Like places where people gather. Right. Right? Where they would actually have some fellowship of sorts mm -hmm. with people. Mm-hmm. Definitely. All right, I'm just throwing that out there. No, no, I think that's great. I think how, that's very great. How do we how do we become better teachers for the 21st century? Hmm. Well, I like I mentioned before, I'm all about the personal. Those who know me know that I'm all about the personal, and I'm also about self care for several different reasons. I won't go into it for this podcast because I would be here all day. <laughs> so one of the things I decided to do is just. Uh, to focus on four areas that are personal. I think individuals who are focusing on being the 21st century teacher can focus on your professional self, your physical self, your mental self, and spiritual self. The professional self, right, is a place where we can focus on technology, right? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. uh, even traditional evidence-based practices of teaching. And this is where you can ask yourself questions like, do you feel like you are your best professional self? Could you work on anything that is listed in the article? If you could improve, I say study up. If you're lacking in any of the characteristics outlined, become a student again. Once you know better, you do better. So one of the things that I do to try to be the professional self or my professional 21st century teacher self is to just focus on, uh, like for example, I commit myself to 36 hours of professional growth per academic year. Mm -hmm. I also follow the 10,000 hour rule that was outlined by Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Outliers, mm -hmm. where he talked about when you have 10,000 hours of deliberate practice, then you become better. So right now I'm at like, by the end of this semester, I'll be at 4,130 hours. So I'm still working on that. So um, and I, for me, I think in order to become a 21st century teacher, you have to focus on the professional. Then physical, are you your best physical self? Uh, are you exercising? Are you sleeping? Are you drinking water? Are you eating healthy? One of the things I do, I try to average out, you know, working out three times a week. Uh, I do CrossFit. I average seven hours of sleep per night. Um, I'm working on drinking more water, which is important in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, and I focus on clean slash whole food eating majority of the time. And I think oftentimes as educators, we can, we'll neglect the physical self, right? Mm -hmm. For the sake of the professional self. But we can't really look at them as being exclusive. Uh, if anything, you have to have that so that you can be your best professional self. Mm -hmm. And then we have mental things like, are you dealing with stress and anxiety appropriately, right? As educators, we have stress. Are you managing your mental health, especially if you have been diagnosed with depression, anxiety, PTSD, or even bipolar disorder? So one of the things that I do to kind of just manage the mental is I do meditation. We have a meditation group here on campus. So I try to average about three to four 20 minute meditative sessions a week. And it really makes a world of a difference. And the last is spiritual. Now, I know the last step may not be for everyone. It kind of depends on the person, the, the personal self. Um, but if that is a component important to you, you might ask yourself, is your spiritual energy centered and balanced? How do you get there? Uh, once again, one of the things I practice is just meditation to try to balance that. So that's what I recommend. I really like how you broke that down into four neat areas and how you connected the professional and physical. Yes. Right. Because that's something that I struggle with and I'm really mm -hmm. working on trying to not, I'm trying to not see those as separate. Right. Right. That they're actually more connected than I've ever thought they were. Which right. Which actually I think helps me be healthier. Right. right. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, I really just, I, I'm just focusing on being a lifelong learner for me. Like mm -hmm. that's how do I become a 21st century teacher or a better teacher is just being a lifelong learner and being open to uh, probably all the areas that you mentioned, right? Yes. Like I, I, don't, I don't think I'm the best person to call upon in a situation where there are emotions involved and I'm trying to sort of grow that part of myself where I might be able to listen a little bit better or maybe offer a little piece of advice or something like that. Um, so I'm working on that. Okay, so, oh, and also being okay with an occasional teacher crisis. Yes. And, and my teacher crises have been happening 
maybe a little bit more regular than usual, and I'm not sure why that is. But even reading about the 21st century teacher, I was thinking, I'm doing it all wrong. Oh my gosh, what am I teaching my students? So whenever I start studying things like this, I panic and think I need to redo my lessons because I feel like if I were an octopus right now, half my tentacles are still in the 20th century, which is when I started teaching. Mm -hmm. And some of my tentacles are in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe that's okay, but maybe I need to drag some more tentacles into the 21st century mm -hmm. to really kind of give me an extra edge and give my students a, an extra boost. Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's your science fiction. The I'm gonna I'm gonna add an octopus to my story that I'm writing. <laughs> so what's on our radar? <laughs> Um, but I think the, the octopus, though, is really interesting because I'm sure you're not the only person who has felt like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I'm one of those people who, like, I get introduced to a new idea or a new way we should be doing things. And then I think to myself, oh, my gosh, I need to do this myself. Right. How am I going to incorporate? But And, and you kind of feel overwhelmed and mm -hmm. you kind of start freaking out and you try to figure out how you're going to reprogram everything that you do. But I think... There is really nothing wrong with having your tentacles in both places. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of the, the ways I describe myself is that I feel like I straddle the fence. Yeah. You know, I have half of my tentacles and one leg on um, the traditional side of teaching, right? Like, I love discussions and using mm -hmm. the whiteboard and non-technology practices mm -hmm. and on the other end I have my other half of my tentacles I use technology right mm -hmm. we have our learning management system which is canvas I'd use things like clickers and Kahoot mm -hmm. and I really think it's it's whatever you feel is really the best representation of you and will also best serve your students mm -hmm. in the classroom mm -hmm. at the end of the day and so when you have those freak out moments I guess freak out a little bit but but breathe and right. then Think about whether or not this is something that will really benefit you and the learning experience of the students, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So Yeah, we have to be okay with it. Yeah, we have to be okay with it. So Maybe if we're not having a teacher crisis, and we never do, maybe there's something wrong if we're not questioning our practices, right? Right. And maybe that's something that we should add to the list of what makes a 21st century teacher reflective. Yes. Welcomes the occasional teacher crisis. Yes, and I really think that is the process of a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. If you are a lifelong learner, then you are always reflecting mm -hmm. and thinking, absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. So now, what's on our radar? I will just say that I finished the book that I was reading, When They Call You a Terrorist. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. The history of, or a memoir of the Black Lives Matters movement. Mm -hmm. So, so good, that's all I can say about that. So right now on my radar, I'm saying it's on my radar, but it's really, I'm already doing it. Yeah. Um, I'm finishing up the book that's called Bunk, The Rise of Hoaxes, Humbug, Plagiarists, Phonies, Post Facts, and Fake News by Kevin Young. Uh, so the thing that's on my radar is actually Anne Devere Smith, who I absolutely love. I have been a fan of hers for years. She is a playwright. I think she's also a professor. She uh, has a, a special on HBO right now called Notes from the Field. And uh, if you're not familiar with her, uh, you may have seen her on The West Wing. She also plays the grandmother on the show Blackish. Um, and the show Notes from the Field uh, definitely models her work, and this is her work. Her work is simply where she uh, conducts interviews with individuals on a specific topic and then she will um, stage them or put them into a performance for, um, and it's great. So some of her work has included uh, focusing on the LA riots. Uh, she also focused on work that focused on the healthcare. And this one I feel like is extremely relevant to education. Um, and Notes from the Field focuses on um, our subpar educational system. And, and this is a direct quote from the article I pulled it from. I pulled it from NPR. And NPR reported that it focuses on how our subpar educational system, quote, funnels many minority and low income kids into a criminal justice system, which further traps them into a cycle of poverty, a so-called school to prison pipeline, end quote. So it it's really sounds fabulous. I'm definitely gonna watch it. Uh, the show, I guess, involves like 250 people that she interviewed 
for this special. So that is absolutely, definitely on my radar. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm gonna check that out. I just took a picture of the title while you were talking. Yes. All right, so I think we might be ready for some nuggets. So you know how we love our nuggets. We hope you love nuggets too. Here's our nugget, and it is, think about the 21st century teacher holistically. So that means think about the 21st century as a whole. There is the professional side, but also don't neglect the personal side when it comes to the 21st century teacher. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today on Two Profs in a Pod. Once again, I'm Tanisha. And I'm Beth. We hope you'll join us again for all things teaching, learning, and nerding. And we hope you'll join us again for our next topic, which is going to be discussions.